James Steinhubel on the Business Channel on TVU with Erica Thomas, CEO of Transitional Solutions. How are you doing today, Erica? I'm doing really well, thanks. How are you? Very well, very well, very well. What, uh, what's new? What's up? You know, we are uh, just plugging along. We are starting to get busier, which is nice. You know, we did see a bit of a slowdown through March and April, but things are picking up in our world. We're seeing a lot of organizations contacting us to do organizational reviews. And obviously, um, you know, with the world we live in and uh, a lot of businesses not being able to open or opening um, in a new format, then they're starting to look at, at their organizations as a whole. So we're talking, we're talking uh, businesses, NGOs, governments. What, why are they, you know, why are they looking at doing an organizational review now? Like what's, um, so what's, what's in their minds? Organizations typically do an organizational review for a number of different reasons. And I think really the top three um, are around budget. You know, if they need to make budget cuts, often they'll do an organizational review to make sure they're cutting in the right space. Um, or cutting to, you know, finding efficiencies and, and a more effective way of doing things. Um, people is another big reason that organizations do reviews. You know, if there's a culture issue that they need to identify, or sometimes new management um, wants to see how the organization is producing and how they're working um, together. And then sort of the third big reason why organizations do review is really around productivity. You know, if they're seeing a drop in productivity or for some reason they need to increase productivity, then they'll do a review to see areas where they, again, can find efficiencies and be a more productive organization. Yeah, I've got, I've got questions about each of those, but, but before I ask them, just I want to go and take the time that you need so that we can, you know, create the context. What, what is an organizational review? So an organizational review can be, you know, around the organization as a whole, or it can be just around a certain department or an area of the business. Um, but really what it is, is it's a deep dive into the people, the processes, um, even policies, um, to really see if there are areas where they're operating inefficient if there's areas where maybe there's some culture issues, some people issues. Um, but basically what it is, is it is a look at the organization and it's a look for those, those, those items. You know, especially in this time, I wanted, I wanted to double back to what, what we were talking about. You know, definitely budget. Um, whether it's a business or NGO or a government organization, we're all facing... Uh, revenue either change or shift or decline so that that affects uh, that affects budget then again um, with people and culture you know, if, you know because at first when you said doing organizational reviews my first instinct is you know I got to rely on the organization that I have in place right to get done what I need to get done but then as I thought and you brought these things up I I've been making organizational review or you know changes so then because people just aren't showing up for work right then that's uh, new management or culture or people you know that that kind of review and then on uh, on productivity I know my productivity is up because I'm working 18 hours a day but <laughs> how do, you know getting getting the getting the returning workforce uh, up and engaged so now that's that's a that's a big thing for see someone that's new to this kind you know they got maybe 40 50 kind of people working for them they might be new to this kind of thing and to open these things up might give them a, a little bit of uh, stress or anxiety but you know so set, setting setting aside that that big that big stuff what what are the key indicators other than that i'm sitting here i'm a ceo or i'm a, one of the vice presidents and what am I looking at? You know, what kind of emails am I seeing that makes me think I got to phone transitional solutions and at least have you tell me how this is going to work? Like, what, right. what am I looking for? So I think before I get on that, I think the one thing that you talked about, about the anxiety of people and the nervousness is I think that that's something that you can't ignore. Um, you know, anytime we go into an organization to do an organization review, the very first thing that we talk to our clients about is, is proper communications and engagement with the staff to make sure that um, they understand what the objectives it are. 
because people right away worry about their jobs. They right away worry mm -hmm. about, okay, how is this going to impact me? Um, and do I have to try and legitimize my role in the organization? And so we try very, very first to communicate with the staff and ensure that we put some of those anxieties at ease. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as triggers to make you do an organizational review, well, first of all, I think any organization that's been operating for a long time should do one of these, I would say at least every sort of five to seven years. And it doesn't have to be a deep dive, but it should be just a general look at how your organization is operating, how it's producing, and if there are areas for efficiency, because we all get sort of complacent in our work and we, we do things the way we've always done them and that may not be the most efficient and effective way to do it. And so um, that's definitely something I would suggest. Other trigger points would be obviously right now, you know, if they're um, for government organizations, particularly that are seeing potential in um, the inability to collect on taxes, whether those are property taxes or government taxes or, or what have you, um, there's going to be a need to make some cuts. And so rather than just making those cuts blindly, doing an organizational review to help you identify those and, and maybe, maybe cuts aren't necessary. Maybe it's just uh, shifting. It's um, changing the way things are done to make it more efficient. Um, you know, even things like space, space costs money. Well, in the last two and a half months, we've all been working remotely without that space. And how effective has that been? And can you continue to do that and maybe give up some space? Well, that's, uh, that's interesting. I wanted to, um, I wanted to talk about that change management. So, so you're in, you know, we're in the process of the review. Soon as you start looking at that, you're, you're initiating change. You can't look at the environment. So, so I'm bringing, I mean, we're bringing you in your transitional solutions. How, how are you managing that with us? Like, so, you know, so we're opening up the top of this, you know, yeah. like, how is that, how, how is it, uh, you know, move along so that we're not interrupting business and we can make these, uh, make these uh, transitions. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we do our best to engage with as many stakeholders within the organization as possible, obviously without interrupting day-to-day um, -day business. Uh, we ensure that we engage with staff, you know, if there's unions involved and, and there are potential cuts or changes in, in job scope, then of course we have to engage with the union. Um, we definitely engage with any sort of governing body. So whether it's a CEO, whether it's a board of directors, whether it's council of a municipality, um, mm -hmm. we ensure we engage with those folks as well and make sure that it's a process where we are working with the client and with our stakeholders so that they're a part of the solution. And, and often some of the biggest cost savings and biggest um, solutions that we have found have been as a result of those engagements. They've been from frontline staff that have had this idea of how to make a process more efficient and just haven't had the right uh, channel to get that idea forward. So it's uh, it's triggering it's triggering uh, uh, innovation and uh, uh, renewal within the company the process and those are excellent soft skills that's uh, that's very impressive. So what does that look like? You know, we pick up the phone, the email you from that point to the point that you're um, you know here and working with us. What does that look like? So it's a it's actually quite a lengthy process. Um, typically, an organizational review for a for a whole organization um, can take upwards of about six months. And of course, we start with communications and engagement with the staff. Um, we look at resource allocation. We look at areas where um, resources are overlapping. Things are maybe uh, being done redundantly. Uh, we look at gaps in service. Um, we always keep in mind the strategic objectives of the organization. Uh, so whether there's a strategic plan or objectives of a department, we always make sure that we try and find alignment with what people are doing to those objectives. And if there isn't alignment, then is what they're doing actually providing any sort of benefit to the organization or is it a service that maybe isn't needed? We also do a comparison to other similar organizations. So, you know, if it's a municipality, then we will find 
five or six like-sized municipalities um, that we we seem to understand are operating efficiently and effectively. And we do a bit of a comparison as to what their organizations look like. We do the same in a private sector. We'll look for companies with you know, um, similar product offerings, similar size and number of employees. And we do that comparison just to make sure that we're on track and efficiencies. Um, we look at the culture for sure. And then we look for opportunities where we can create efficiencies, where we can make the organization operate more effectively, where maybe it's moving people into the right seat, um, all of those different areas. I think the biggest thing is it's not always about money. Organizational reviews do, does not have to be about money. It doesn't have to be about cuts. You know, we, we operate as an organization with sort of very high ethical standards and we have had clients sort of say, you know, I need you to come in and do a review. And at the end of the review, I need to make sure that that individual A is gone. And the whole, the whole objective of the review is just to give them a reason to get rid of somebody. And that's not a job that we take. We always go in and we say, we are not coming in with any preconceived notions of, of what the end result looks like. If this is about getting rid of somebody, then that's something that you need to figure out internally. We are not going to come in and give you the ax. Um, we're going to come in and we're going to look at the organization as a whole or a department or even a team. If there's a team that's not operating efficiently, we can definitely work with that. It's a little bit more of a, of a soft human resource focus rather than a productivity or budget focus. Um, but we certainly um, ensure that, that we come in as a neutral third party and that we look at the organization holistically and uh, provide recommendations that they can take forward. So looking, um, you know, where we're at, you know, we've, you know, we're basically coming out of, uh, out of COVID again. Well, we talked about a little bit, but uh, let's go forward for you and, uh, and transition solutions. What do you, what's getting back to normal, you know, your trade shows, your events, your conferences, anything coming up? Um, unfortunately, all of those types of um, marketing opportunities and networking opportunities for us have been canceled for the foreseeable future. Um, we're still waiting to see on some of the fall events, um, but we're kind of trying to build our own networking opportunities. We are um, bringing together a bunch of our um, old clients, uh, current clients, and even hopefully potential new clients. Some of our city and town managers and county managers we're bringing together to calling them CAO bear pit sessions. And it's just really an opportunity for them to chat with each other, um, you know, identify issues, how they've resolved those issues, uh, working together and learning from each other. We really just sit back and facilitate. We ask some questions um, and help sort of share the information after the meetings, but that's kind of what we're doing. Um, we're also obviously, you know, we're consultants, so we are used to working from home. We're used to working remotely, and so we are continuing to do that. That hasn't really changed for us. Our team meetings are a lot more like this than they are in person, and even with our, um, you know, some organizational reviews that we're doing, while we would love to be in person and sitting across a boardroom table from the people that we're interviewing and the staff that we are working with, um, we're doing a lot more of these type uh, meetings and interviews, and that's kind of our new normal right now. That's interesting. That's interesting. And now um, lots of um, municipalities and regional marketing type groups are forming new committees and there, you know, mm -hmm. there seems to be a lot of action plans going on. There seems to be, you know, a, a shift to, uh, um, you know, specialty high performance uh, products and, uh, and technology anything you know coming through you know your uh, your connections that way anything new starting to appear for you on, on the horizon well you know anytime something like this happens it's always a a race to uh a race to remain relevant and it's a race to capture new market share in sort of new areas you know it's no different than you know the the fight between Zoom or GoToMeeting or Google Meets or all of those. I think everybody's kind of looking to how they can remain relevant if our world doesn't go back to normal anytime soon. Um, so 
there's nothing really new in our world other than how we how we network, how we work with our clients. Um, I will say that it's it's really encouraging to see some of our clients engage committees, engage external stakeholders in how things are are going to progress. And I know, you know, for instance, I live in, we live in Strathcona County and I'm seeing that they're developing all sorts of different committees on um, whether it's how to, you know, the relaunch or whether it's a based around industry. Um, I'm encouraged to see them engaging stakeholders in that. And I think that a lot of organizations are going to need to do that moving forward. And on the, uh, uh, industrial side, the uh, the petrochemical uh, world. Any uh, anything exciting? Nothing really exciting. I mean, they are dealing with this not much differently than the rest of the world. I mean, obviously, there's certain people that have to remain on site in order to make sure that the industries continue operating safely. Um, but be What's interesting is that we are finding some of our clients saying that with the decreased number of people on site, that their sites have actually never run more efficiently. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see that. And I think that there, um, for anybody doing master's degrees, there's going to be a lot of really good case study content out of the last three months on, on how efficient and effective organizations can be and, and where there's redundancy and where there are um, what areas are slowing us down in our organization. Isn't that interesting? Even at the top, most sophisticated industrial uh, levels of businesses, they're finding uh, uh, simplicity in, uh, in COVID too. I find, that's what I find. Is, is, is totally. like the, the simplicity of it. And then you can, then you can move forward in that. Right. So, but that's, that's, uh, that's good. Sometimes we overcomplicate things and um, while well, we think we're being uh, really innovative and effective and sometimes we're just overcomplicating it and sometimes and I think COVID has made us go back to the roots and go back to what's necessary to get the job done and there's cost savings and efficiencies and and more effective organizations coming out of it I think. Good to see you, but awesome to hear from you. Erica Thomas, CEO of Transitional Solutions on the Business Channel, TVU. See you next time. Thanks, James.